Good morning, grade one. It's Thursday, April 2nd, 2020, 4-2-20. And today for math, we're going to talk about adding three digits. We're also going to be looking at our super duper today. So I need you to get a couple things to be able to work with me while we're doing our lesson here on the video. And so two things that you'll need, you'll need your math workbook or your uh, binder, and you need this worksheet page that has some addition problems and three circles in the center of it. It's for lesson 114. And then I also need you to have your super duper making waves book handy. So if you wanna pause the video right now and go and get those things, uh, that would be great. Oh, one second. Um, for the math, you'll need um, some type of small thing that you can use. I'm using the teeniest little um, unifix cube. So something tiny you can use for those circles, um, it could be pennies, uh, maybe little Legos or uh, Skittles or M&Ms or chocolate chips. Oh boy, now I'm getting hungry. Uh, so something like that, you'll need about 20 of them, okay? You won't need more than that. Um, and we'll need those for our math. So if you'll go and get your math page, uh, some small items that you can use to put inside the circles as we're adding, and your super duper book. So go ahead and pause the video and go and get those things. Well, welcome back. How are you doing? All right, we are going to, whoops, I've got my page the wrong way, cut over to the worksheet page. So let's take a look at our math first of all, okay? So you'll want to have a flat surface to do this on so that you can put your page down flat and have your other things. I'm gonna cut to the other page that shows the worksheet, okay? See you soon. You'll still hear my voice though. All right, so make sure that you can have this on a flat surface so that your items don't go rolling away. And you'll also need a pencil handy. So let's look at uh, number A or letter A here, okay? And on letter A, we're going to be adding three digits. Three plus two plus two. And the way that we're going to practice this today is whatever our digits are, we're going to put a matching amount in the circle that matches its position. So for our first one, for example, we have three. So in this first circle, we're going to put three of whatever object we decided. Remember, I'm using those tiny unifix cubes. So there, I've got three. Then our next digit is a two. So in the next circle, we're going to put two. Can you do this on your page at the same time? And then our last one is a two right here. So we're going to put a two here as well. All right, now we're going to add. The cool thing about adding is that it doesn't matter what order you add in. You can add three plus two gives me five. Five plus two gives me seven. That's just fine. You could do two plus two gives me four. Four plus three gives me seven. No matter what order you add them in, the answer is always going to be the same when you are adding. And so in your box here, you're going to write a number seven. It's kind of hard for you to see that on mine, isn't it? But I have a seven written there. You make sure that you have a seven written on yours. Would you please make it nice and clear? All right, now we're going to clear our board. Clear your board. And now we're going to do our second one, letter B. So letter B has one plus eight plus two. So we're going to put one in the first circle. We're going to put eight, oh boy, that's a big number. Two, four, six, eight in the middle number, and then two more in that last one. Now we certainly could do it in order. We could say one plus eight is nine, nine plus two is 11. But especially when we have a big number, a lot of times it's best to start with that number. Eight plus two is where I would go because eight plus two, that's an easy one, that's 10. We know that one so quickly. Eight plus two is 10 and one more, that's 11. But it doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm just giving you some clues on um, how I would add them as well. And so in your box for B, you'll write the number 11. Clear your board. Do you think you know what to do for C? You go ahead and put your shapes, whatever you have chosen to work with for your manipulative, you put those in your circles and then we'll check it. All 
All right, so in your first circle, you have two. In your middle circle, I'll bring those apart a little bit so you can see that. In your middle circle, you should have five. One, two, three, four, five. And our last circle should have three. One, two, three. We can do it in order. Two plus five is seven. Seven plus three is 10. We could start with the biggest. Five plus three is eight. And we know from our last problem, eight plus two is 10. You could also think, hmm, I know three plus two gives me five and five plus five gives me 10. There you go. Lots of different ways that we could add them and they all come up to the same thing. They all come up to 10. Could you check it by counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You sure could. Now we're going to clear our board and we're going to turn it the other direction. You'll notice that our first three were written horizontally and now our next three are written vertically. Now I have to kind of let my bottom circle be chopped off a little bit here, otherwise you can't see um, the numbers and that's more important to me, okay? So look at letter D. We're still adding three digits, one, two, three digits, and we're going to use our circles the same way. The top circle will stand for the top number, the middle circle for the middle number, the bottom circle for the bottom number. So that's easy to do the top one, we just need a one. Oh, I think this one's going to be our biggest answer yet. Two, four, six, eight for that middle circle. And then on the bottom, we need nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to push mine up here a little bit so that you can see that I do have nine here. There we go. A little bit outside the circle, but I want you to be able to see that. Now, we can do 1 plus 8 is 9, and then we get a really easy one to do from there. 9 plus 9, that's a double. That's 18. That's an easy way to do it. We could also start from the bottom. 9 plus 8 is 17. One more gives me 18. We could know that 9 and 1 is 10. 10 plus 8 gives us 18. So no matter which order you do it in, it all adds up to the same, 18. All right, clear your board. Can you do E on your own? Give it a try. All right. In our top circle, you had three, I bet. In your middle circle, you had three and three more for the six. And then on the bottom one, you had four. What order did you use to add it? For this one, I would probably do six plus four is 10, 10 plus three gives me 13. But it's okay to say six plus three is nine and nine plus four gives me 13 as well. So many ways to do it. You wanna do it what's easiest for you. But three plus six plus four, no matter which order you add them in, always gives you 13. One last one to do. I'm gonna scooch my paper up just a little bit, cut off a little bit of my top circle there. All right, and now we're going to do five plus two plus four. You know what to do, don't you? Go right ahead, get started. All right, we've got our circles filled. Five on top two in the middle, so I'm gonna scooch these down a little, two in the middle and four on the bottom, just like we have for our digits here. How are you going to add it? Are you going to do five plus two is seven plus four is 11? Or five plus four is nine plus two is 11? Or are you going to do four plus two is six plus five is 11? No matter how you do it, I'm gonna scooch my paper up here a little bit, we get to 11. All right, look at that. We're done with that worksheet. Make sure your name is on top and give yourselves a smiley face. Boy, I sure miss making smiley faces with my pencil on your pages. I get to do it on the computer, but it's definitely not the same. 
All right, we're all set with that for math. Now I'm going to go back to uh, where you can see me. Hello. I was always there, just using a different camera. And now I want you to take out your book of making waves. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is look at what I think are the silliest pictures here. <laughs> oh, the back cover, it just cracks me up every time. I see it time and time again, and it's just so funny. Uh, it's the one over here. This one is my favorite, where it looks like he's slurping spaghetti with the rope there. Isn't that funny? Oh, my goodness. Funny boats. I think this is going to be a fun book to read. Let's take a look at our story words for today. Our first word, mm -hmm, you got it, they. Remember that with they, even though it makes the long A sound at the end, it's T-H-E-Y, they. And then we've got... Not people, that's how I say it when I'm trying to remember how to spell it, but people, people. The O is silent, we don't hear it, people. Our next word, our third word there, motor, motor. Some boats have to have a motor, I'll bet. And then our next word has a soft C at the beginning, s. And remember when we make that s sound, we want our tongue nice and wide in the back of our mouth so that it stops all that extra air from coming through. We don't want it to sound slushy, just a nice, clean, real light s There you go, city. Our next C word has the hard C sound, k -k -k. and that is containers. And our last one is water, and you certainly need water to make waves. Well, any liquid will do, but I think water is pretty fun. Remember the first thing that we do, the first way I want you to read the story as you're going through is do a picture read. Take a good look at the front cover. Then look at each of the pictures very closely and very carefully. What kind of story do the pictures tell in your book? When you're done looking at all of the pictures on your book, and again, we're kind of ignoring the words. We're not even caring that they're there. Just looking at all the pictures, all the different details. On every picture and even on the back page again. Once you're finished with that, then go back and read it using the words. Now this will be part of your reading log work, okay? And so you'll use it um, as you're reading it each day um, to a mom or dad, or how about me? You could call me on the telephone. Call me on the telephone and me, read me your story. I would love that. Maybe today when you're going to do your memory treasure, you could call Mrs. Stolt and you could read your story, Making Waves. I won't be able to sign it for you because I'm a little ways away, uh, but you could have a mom or dad or you could sign for me. I would give you permission once you read it to me. I would give you permission then to sign my initials for it for one of your days. That would be kind of fun. I would love that. I don't get to hear you read very often. Also, make sure you're doing whatever work Mrs. Strand has assigned for you. Remember, she sends an email to your family each day to tell you what things that you have to do for Super Kids. On Spelling City, make sure you're taking a test on Unit 11, Week 2 this week, okay? We had Unit 11, Week 1 last week, so we should have a test done for that. And then we have Unit 11, Week 2 words this week. They were written on that little calendar that you had, so I hope you've been practicing them. Uh, all sorts of um, activities you can do on Spelling City, and certainly it's okay to write them out and do stories with them or play games with them yourself at home. Uh, remember to keep reading on Epic. Every day there's at least one, and yesterday there were two books assigned um, that go along with our DT3 activity. That's for the whole um, lower grade classroom here. And then each of the books that I assign, and many others, are on AR, but the way that I score you and give you a grade for the assigned books on Epic is by you taking the AR test. And then one note, when you read that book on Epic, make sure you go all the way to the end. Every book has a little bar, I think it's green at the end, that you have to click on to show that you completed reading that book. So always make sure you uh, click on that because especially with these nonfiction books, there's a, uh, oftentimes an index and a glossary at the very end and then you have to go past that to make sure that you've clicked that you have completed the book, okay? So just a word for that. Otherwise, it doesn't show on my um, sheet that I, an overview sheet that I get from Epic. It doesn't show that you finished the book. It shows you started it, but it doesn't show that it's been completed. And then our last thing, not because it's least important, but actually because it's most important, it's 
the base. It's that solid structure that we build everything else on. And that's our memory treasure for today. Now, I sure could have put it at the top as well because it is the most important thing that we have um, in our school here. And that is having God's word as part of our day each and every day. Um, so make sure that you call and tell me your memory treasure today as well. If you have any questions, anytime, make sure that you give me a call and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great day.